Welcome back to this series where we're building a full stack application and implementing end-to-end -end type safety as we do so. In the first video of this series, we actually built out our front-end application and we built that in a fully type safe way. So as its own little siloed piece, it is fully type safe. Now those types that we built were actually uh, manually written. So those types are specific to the front end itself and they don't have any sort of relation to a GraphQL API. They're not kept in sync anywhere. So we wanna change that. What we're gonna be working on next is actually building a GraphQL API that will eventually be used by our front end to generate a set of types. And those types will be in sync across all of our project, thus end-to-end -end type safety. Uh, but in order to do so, we are gonna have to do quite a bit of setup. So this video is gonna be completely dedicated to setting up things so that we can build our GraphQL API. Uh, the things that we're gonna set up in this video are actually our TypeScript project. So we're gonna initialize the TypeScript project and then we're going to set up a database. We will be using Postgres. So we're gonna use uh, Railway to actually deploy a Postgres database that we're gonna access. And then finally, we're gonna set up Prisma within our project, connect it to our Railway uh, hosted database and seed some data and model out our data so that we can actually build up our database's schema. So it's gonna be quite a bit to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right in. The very first thing that we're gonna to need to do is head over to a terminal window. So I'll pop one open here. And in a location where you want this project to live, you're just going to make a new directory and I'm gonna call mine GraphQL server. And then you're gonna enter that directory. So I'll CD into GraphQL server. So within this project, we are going to use NPM, which is Node Package Manager, to install some packages and to just manage different parts of uh, the project. So let's initialize NPM, and you can do that by going npm init-y. And this will initialize NPM and get us ready to start using that. So the uh, now that that's installed or set up, actually, we can install some new packages. So the ones we're gonna need for this project in this video specifically are going to all be development packages. So we can install dash D to signify that these will only be used in development. And then we're actually gonna use this command. So we're installing TypeScript, which is um, what we're gonna be using to write our code. We are gonna be writing TypeScript files. Um, we are installing the types for Node.js because this is a Node application. We're installing the Prisma CLI because we will be initializing Prisma. And then finally, this TS node dev package, which allows us to run TypeScript files. So I'll go ahead and hit install there. Cool, so that finished up. And now we can actually jump into the project. So I'm gonna do code dot. And what that's gonna do is pop open VS Code for me in this project folder. If you don't have the VS Code CLI installed, you can just pop it open in VS Code the way you normally would. But popping into this, we're going to see we have a package JSON. This was built for us with the npm init command. And we have node modules because we just installed a couple of packages. Um, I'm going to pop open and start using this terminal now. And within this terminal, we are going to uh, run the initialize command for TypeScript. So I'll do npx tsc dash dash init. And this should initialize a TypeScript config file for us. So now we have the TypeScript config that we need to run our TypeScript project. The next thing that I'm going to do is head over into package.json and um, I'll create a dev script here and it's going to be called dev and it's going to run ts node dev and then I'm going to point it to source index.ts. So this is going to say that we want to run a file in a source directory called index.ts. And that doesn't exist yet, so we will create that. Create a new directory called source. And in that, we're gonna create index.ts. And for now, I'm gonna console log just a hello world message so that we can make sure this is actually working. If we run this, npm run dev, we'll see hello world. So we know that we can run some TypeScript now. So that looks good there. And the next thing that we need to do is actually set up our database because we have our TypeScript project now. Before we can set up Prisma, we need a database to connect to. And to do so, we're gonna use Railway. 
And what that is, is a service that allows you to start up a project and deploy it and be able to access it. So it's a project that runs on the cloud for you. And if you don't have an account already, you can head to railway.app and on uh, the sign up, you can sign up with GitHub or you can sign up with Gmail. Uh, there's a couple different options there. So sign up with whatever you're comfortable with and then you'll be spit out onto a dashboard. And the dashboard is going to look something like this. I think if you don't have a project already, there's going to be a big thing in here where you can click to start a new project. But for me, since I have one, I'm going to hit this new project button. And this is going to give you a couple of options to uh, start off with. And the one that we're going to use is provision PostgreSQL. This will set up a Postgres database for you. And when you click that, it's going to start creating a project. So this project is um, being spun up right now. A container is being spun up and it's starting up a PostgreSQL database. And once it's done, it should pop up right here that uh, it's using Postgres and give us a couple of options for connecting to it. So we'll just wait for this to go and it looks like it's done. So once it finishes, you can just click on this box here and head over to this connect tab. And then there's gonna be a copy button. This is your uh, connection URL. So this is the URL that we're gonna to use to actually connect to this database. Now, if you've set up Postgres databases in the past running locally or even running in the cloud, uh, you might know that sometimes it's uh, a pretty lengthy process. You have to set up the whole server, you have to get the connection strings and you have to um, manage uh, a lot of the different little uh, pieces that you get running. But Railway super nice because as you saw, it was just a couple clicks and we now have a fully functional Postgres server uh, running for us in the cloud that we can just connect to. So go ahead and copy this connection string because we will need it in just a second and head back over to your code. And down here in the terminal, we're actually going to initialize Prisma now because we have a database. We now need to initialize Prisma so we can start modeling our tables. So if we do mpx prisma init and run that, that will use the Prisma CLI to initialize Prisma. And what we're gonna get is this new directory here. It's called Prisma and it has a schema.prisma file in it. And what this is, is just a file where you can model out your data. And right now all it has is a generator block which tells Prisma that it, we are gonna want the Prisma client generator and a data source block. And this data source block uh, let's Prisma know that we're connecting to a Postgres database and that the connection string is found in the environment at a database URL variable. And that variable is going to be found in .env, which was also created by the Prisma CLI. And currently it just has a dummy variable in it. So this is where you want to paste in that one that you had just copied uh, from Railway. And with that copied over, we can now go back into the schema.prisma. And this is where we're going to begin modeling out all of our tables. So if we think back to the front end application that we built, we had two pieces of data to worry about. We had the users and we had messages and each user could have many messages associated with it. So these are the two tables that we're going to need to build here. And to do so, you can just use the model keyword. This will let Prisma know that we're setting up a new table and then we'll do the user table first. And this table is just going to need a couple of fields. We're going to have an ID field, which will be an integer. And we'll use the ID attribute to let Prisma know this is the primary key of that table. And then we'll set a default value of auto increment, which will allow us to use an auto incrementing value. So every time a new record is inserted, it'll have a number that's one more than the previously inserted record. And then the next field that we have is our name field. And that was a string. And then finally, we're going to add a new field called created at, and it's going to be a date time, and we're going to default it to now. And what that's going to do is basically populate a field with a current timestamp every time a field is uh, inserted. That way we know when the record was created. I like to add that in just so I can refer back to it if I ever need it. And then the message table is going to be very similar to this one, so I'm going to copy this guy down and just rename this to message. And the only real difference here is that we're gonna call this field body. Um, so that's the two individual fields themselves, or sorry, the individual tables themselves. And the only piece that we need to do now is set up the relation between the two because 
a user can have many messages associated with it, we're going to need to set up that uh, relation. So add a new field to your user model, and it's going to be called messages. And we'll say this will be an array of message objects. But this is giving us an error because we need to define the relation on the opposite side as well so that we know how to get to a user from an individual message. So on the message side, we'll create a user and then we'll say this is of the user type and that this is going to be a relation. And now relations have two different things that we can fill in here. They have fields and references. And that's going to be the, the fields here are going to be a field on the actual message model that matches up with a field on the user model. And the references is going to point to that field on the user model that it matches up with. Now that might sound confusing, so let's go ahead and fill this in so that it makes a little more sense. We are going to first type in user ID here to add a new field, and it's going to be an integer. And the goal is that this user ID field is going to be populated with an ID from whichever user it's associated with. So this will be the foreign key. And we can now say that our field on the message model is going to be user ID, and it should match its value with an ID on the user model. And that there is how you set up a relation like this. Uh, so this would be kind of like a one to many relationship. So one user can have many messages and a message can only be associated with a single user. And with that in place, we're now ready to push this schema up to our database. So I'll open another terminal window and we're gonna use Prisma migrate to do this. So I'll do npx Prisma migrate dev dash dash name because I'm going to name this migration and I'll just call this init because this is going to be our initial migration and hit run on that. And what migrate dev is going to do is it's going to validate your schema and make sure that everything looks good and then it's going to create a migration and that migration is going to live in this migrations folder that it creates and then it's going to actually apply that migration to the database at this uh, database URL variable location. So if you actually look at the migration that got created, we see it'll create the user table for us, it'll create the message table for us, and it sets up that relation between the two. And then that looks like it applied. So if we actually go over to the railway UI and head to the data tab, we can see we have this migrations folder that uh, stores which migrations have been run. We have our message table and our user table. And these tables are currently empty because we haven't stored any data in them yet. So that's what we're going to do next. We can seed this data into, uh, into our database uh, so that we'll have something to play with. And the way we're going to do that is if we go into our Prisma folder, we can create a new file called seed.ts. And in here, we're going to need to import our Prisma client and then run a few operations to insert some data. And our Prisma client was actually generated for us. We can see that in our output here. It should be generated every time you do a, uh, a migration. It will regenerate Prisma client to make sure you have the uh, latest representation of your schema. So we can already import that here using import Prisma client from Prisma client. And then next we can do const Prisma equals new Prisma client. And then we're gonna need an async function here called main and we'll run that. Now within this function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually um, run a couple of Prisma operations to create some data. And I'm gonna copy over a seed script that I've got. And this seed script comes straight from the blog series that goes along with, uh, that goes along with these videos. So if you wanna copy and paste the same seed script, uh, feel free to check out the link, which is in the description and head to the Seed Your Database section and that will have the script that you need to paste in here. But I will walk through it in case you just want to write it out yourself. Um, the very first thing we're doing is we're deleting all user and message records. And the reason we're doing that is because in case this, uh, this migration has been run in the past or the seed script has been run in the past, we want to make sure that we're starting with a clean database with nothing in it. So we are deleting all the records. And then we're going to create three just uh, dummy records. We're going to create some data. And each of those is going to have a name. So I've got Jack, Adam, and Ryan. And each of those users is going to have a message. Um, and they're actually going to have two messages. So we're going to have multiple messages associated with each user. 
Um, so uh, that's the seed script. I'm just repeating that process two more times down here uh, for the other users. And as we get further into the series, I will be walking uh, through how some of these Prisma operations more uh, work in a bit more detail. But for now, just know that prisma.user.create will create a couple of users, and we can create related data just by nesting it into this uh, data object. So in order to run this, Prisma has a nice little helper that you can use. So we can actually go into our package JSON. We can add a Prisma key. And within that key, we can uh, add a seed. And this is just going to use ts node dev again, and it's going to go to the prisma seed.ts file. So we're basically just going to run this seed script, but because we added it there in package JSON, we can now run npx prisma db seed, and that should run our seed script for us. So we're going to see it's running the seed command, and then we get this nice, the seed command has been executed output. And what that means is that it successfully ran through that whole file and should have populated our database with the data that we created. So if we actually head back over to our railway UI, pop into the messages, and maybe we should refresh, we'll see in here that we have six messages. And that's because we have three users with two messages each. And then if we go back to data, hit the user table, um, we can see that we have three users. So that looks like it all worked, and we now have data ready to work with. So with that being complete, we've now set up a TypeScript project, we have set up a database, and then we've also set up Prisma and modeled out our database schema, applied that to our database, and generated some types and a TypeSafe API sort of client uh, to work with in our project. And with that, that's all we're really going to cover today in this video. In the next part of this series, we're actually going to start building out the GraphQL API, and we're going to use a couple of tools to take advantage of these Prisma types that have been generated for us to help us build our API in a nice, type-safe way. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll join me for the next one, and I look forward to it.